So I greet us a very good day in all the places where we are watching and seeing this. And it brings me a very great joy and delight to bring the word of God unto us on this day, on this table of the Diocese of Ife. And while I appreciate my diocesan, the right Reverend Akinlade for this opportunity he has given unto us to be on this platform whereby we share the word of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you so very much for this wonderful opportunity and privilege that we have at all times to be able to share your words together. And we are praying that by these words, you will help us. By these words, you will encourage us to be able to do those things that you expect of us and that you require of us. Blessed be your holy name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. On this day, 15th Sunday in Trinity, we are going to be considering the theme, the Christian's duty to the poor. The Christian's duty to the poor. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7 to 11. Deuteronomy 15, 7 to 11 says, If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother. But you shall open your hand wide unto him, and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need, in that which he wants. Beware that there be not a thought in your wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and your high be evil against your poor brother, and you give him not. And he cry unto the Lord against you, and it will sin unto you. You shall surely give him, and your heart shall not be grieved when that you give unto him. Because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless you in all your works, and in all that thou put thy hand unto. For the poor shall never cease out of your land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide unto your brother, to your poor and to your needy in your land. We're talking about the Christian's duty to the poor. The Bible says in the letter of Paul to the Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible says, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Of course, we know that Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31 is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And we know the key lesson in this passage, in that story, is that the rich man had so much money, but he wouldn't give to Lazarus. And uh, when the two of them died, there was an exchange. Lazarus became important and sitting in a very comfortable position, whereas it was the turn of the rich man to beg. So we must endeavor to give to the poor. The Lord wants you to consider the poor around you and be kind and generous to them. As a Christian, it should be your concern because it is a concern of God to take care of the poor and vulnerable in the society, such as the orphans and the widows. These defenseless people, they will appreciate the Lord more for any little act of kindness shown to them. Who is a Christian? Because we are talking about the Christian's duty to the poor. And I think it's important that we remind ourselves who a Christian is. In Acts chapter 11, the believers were first called Christians at Antioch because the people saw that they were Christ-like. They were unique and positively different to the people around them. They were known for their love and sharing of things in common distributing to the necessities of the saints. In every generation, Christians, we always have these duties to the poor. And that's the distinguishing factor between us and others. He is not a Christian who is won by mere talks with no commensurate actions. The Word of God is very clear about what we are expected to do, especially for the poor. So how can we be effective at this Christian duty? Number one, you have to stop looking at your personal needs alone. You have to think about others. You have to be selfless. 
there is no selfish person that can never become great. And so we must consider that what the Bible says in Philippians 2, 4 is that you should look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So if you are a Christian, you must not be selfish, but you must be selfless. And don't say, oh, the, the society, things are tough. So for that reason, I will just mind my business. I won't care about anybody. You must think about others as a Christian. The number two thing is that you don't just wish or pray for the poor. Yes, it's good to pray for the poor, but you must do more than praying or wishing. You must act by giving from your substance. Share what you have. James chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So, brethren, we should consider that when somebody is in need, what that person needs is material. So, you don't just say, go, be filled, or I pray for you. You should do more than just praying. Number three is that we need to look unto Jesus. We need to look at the life of Christ. We need to look at the words of Christ and obey his words. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. We see that in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you may take, whither it shall be measured to you again. So if we consider these words of Christ, these are golden words. These are nuggets that if we consider them, they will benefit us directly. So Jesus Christ says, give and it shall be given unto you. So we should learn to give to the poor. And then number four, we should not expect the poor to be the one to give back to you, but expect the Lord. The Bible says he that gives to the poor is lending to the Lord. And you know, when you lend to the Lord, God is not a debtor. God will never hold you. It means you will live long to get the reward of what you lend to the Lord. So keep on giving to the poor. And then you also need to work hard in order to have to share with others. You are not to have the mind that you are to cater for yourself alone. So I think that would be a motive even for hard working, that you want to have to hand extra so that you also can give to somebody that is in need. And it matters so much that we consider the exhortation in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians 4, 28 says, Let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs. So you need to work hard so that you can have more that you will be able to share with others. And then you should not be discouraged by the attitude of people. You know, while you are giving to the poor, there may be some discouragements from some quarters, but you must remember the words of God that says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So don't allow for discouragement. Don't allow for distraction. While you make up your mind to give to the poor, do not be weary in well-doing. And finally, keep heaven in perspective. As you lay your treasure for yourself in heaven, why you give to the Lord. Yes, because when you give to the poor, you are actually giving to the Lord. You are laying up treasure for yourself in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon heart. We are mort and rust doth corrupt, and we are thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We are neither mort nor rust doth corrupt, and we are thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So in conclusion, Christians are mandated to give to the poor. And love is a key factor in all our giving. We must, in our minds, give to the Lord without allowing anyone or anything to discourage us. Our reward is sure in this life. 
and in the world to come. Let us pray. Father, thank you for providing for us all that we have and all that we have, they come from you. Put it in us to remember to give back to you in meeting the needs of the poor around us without any secret or open complaint and grumble. May we be able to please you in all that we do now until eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.